Hey everyone! In this video I'm going to talk about stoichiometry. That's a very weird sounding word, isn't it? Stoichiometry. And the fact that it sounds weird may lead you to believe that it's difficult or complicated, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Stoichiometry is actually very, very simple. It's very logical, and any math that you use with stoichiometry is very, very simple math. So don't be afraid of the word stoichiometry. Uh, you know, just, just give it a chance because it's really not that hard. And you may be asking yourself here, well, you know, what is stoichiometry and why is there a grilled cheese sandwich on my screen? So I'm going to explain all of that right now. And I'm going to start by uh, just defining the word stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry, this is the branch of chemistry that deals with the numerical relationships between reactants and products in chemical reactions. So the way that we get these numerical relationships is they come from balanced chemical equations. So that we already know how to balance chemical equations at this point. If you don't know how to balance chemical equations, it's very simple, and I do have a video for that. And of course, I'll provide a link for that for you. But again, the numerical relationships in stoichiometry come from balanced chemical equations. So the balanced chemical equations basically serve as recipes. So the balanced chemical equation tells us how many of each reactant that we put in, and it also tells us how many of each product that we get out. And it's at this point that I'd like to uh, go to my grilled cheese example. So again, I really like grilled cheese sandwiches. They're always one of my go-to recipes during the day. And the recipe that I use to make grilled cheese sandwiches calls for two slices of bread, two slices of cheese, and one tablespoon of butter. Now suppose I had more than enough bread and more than enough butter, and I wanted to know how many grilled cheese sandwiches I could make just from a given amount of cheese. Well, all I would have to do is just to look at the amount of cheese that it takes to make one grilled cheese sandwich. So this says that for every two slices of cheese that I have, that's gonna give me one grilled cheese sandwich, assuming I have enough of everything else. So what I can do is I can write that ratio down, two slices of cheese to one grilled cheese sandwich. And I can actually use this ratio as a conversion factor if I wanted to, to convert from slices of cheese to grilled cheese sandwiches. So what if I had 10 slices of cheese? How many grilled cheese sandwiches could I make? Well again, assuming we had enough of everything else, all I would have to do is use my conversion factor between slices of cheese to, grill, to grilled cheese sandwiches. I would put my one grilled cheese sandwich on top, that's the unit that I want, and I would put my two slices of cheese on the bottom because that's the unit that I'm trying to get rid of. Notice that slices of cheese cancels with slices of cheese. And that's going to give me five grilled cheese sandwiches. Now, this is done in chemical terms all the time. And the way that we do this is by, uh, we, we call them two different things. There's one called mole-to-mole -mole conversions, and there's another one called mass-to-mass -mass conversions. So let's start by looking at mole-to-mole -mole conversions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go off of this chemical equation here. This is the chemical equation for the combustion of propane and I've used this uh, this equation in some of my videos uh, as an example in some of my videos. This is the uh, chemical reaction that takes place uh, when you're when you fire up your gas grill. So it's a good uh, it's, it's a pretty good you know example of a chemical reaction and notice that it's already balanced for us so we can uh, we can sort of skip that step. Uh, sometimes you'll be given a chemical equation uh, that won't be balanced and you'll have to balance it real quick. Uh, but in these examples, the chemical equation is already balanced for us. So what we're going to do in a mole-to-mole -mole conversion is we're going to con convert from the amount of one of the reactants or products in moles to the amount of another one of the reactants or products. And we're going to use the balanced chemical equation as our recipe to accomplish that conversion. So it looks a little something like this. So this example says, according to the equation above, how many moles of water are produced from 2.72 moles of propane, C3H8, in excess oxygen? So it's saying that assume, assuming we have more than enough oxygen, how much water could we get when we start out with 2.72 moles of propane? So again, I start out with my 2.72 moles of propane. I'm going to convert from moles of propane to moles of water. And what's going to allow me to accomplish this conversion is the coefficients of that balanced chemical equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my coefficient for 
propane on the bottom of my conversion factor, and I'm going to put my coefficient for water on the top of my conversion factor. And notice that our coefficient in front of propane is an understood 1, and then the coefficient in front of water is 4. So we have 4 moles of water over 1 mole of propane, and the moles of propane cancels out, and that's going to give us 10.9 moles of water. So this is a mole to mole conversion. So I just by just by knowing how how much how many moles of propane I had, I was able to convert that to how many moles of water I can get from the reaction just using the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation. So let's do uh, one more quick example of a mole to mole conversion and that may look something like this. So in this example, we're actually, instead of converting from moles of a reactant to moles of, of a product, what we're going to do is we're going to convert from moles of one of the reactants to moles of one of the other reactants. So the problem says, according to the equation above, how many moles of oxygen are required to react completely with 2.72 moles of propane? So we start out with our 2.72 moles of propane. We're going to convert that to moles of oxygen, again, using the coefficients that come from our balanced chemical equation. We're going to put the coefficient for propane, which is 1, on the bottom. We're going to put the coefficient for oxygen, which is 5, on the top. Moles of propane cancels out, and we end up with 2.72 times 5, which is 13.6 moles of oxygen. Now, multi-mole conversions are nice and easy and they, and they only take one step, but they're not very common. Uh, more commonly, what we have to do is we have to start out with the, the mass of a reactant or product and we have to convert that into the mass of another reactant or product. And these are called mass-to-mass -mass conversions. And they're a little bit more lengthy, definitely more steps, but they're not really that hard. So I'm going to use my same reaction equation here, which is the you know the combustion of propane. I'm not going to I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to do a couple of examples, or one example actually, of a mass to mass conversion. So it looks something like this. So it says according to the equation above, what mass of carbon dioxide is produced when 77.9 grams of propane reacts with excess oxygen? So instead of starting out with moles, we're starting out with grams. So there's going to be some extra steps involved here. So we have our 77.9 grams of propane and we need what we need to do eventually is we need to convert that into grams of carbon dioxide. Now of course we can't really do that directly because this balanced chemical equation up here doesn't say anything about mass. This balanced chemical equation tells us that one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. It doesn't say anything about grams, it's talking about moles. So what we need to do is we need to convert that mass of propane in grams into moles of propane and of course we can accomplish this using the molar mass which is given from the periodic table. So I'm going to put my one mole of propane on the top and I'm going to put my 44.10 grams of propane on the bottom. How did I get 44.10 grams? Well again all I had to do was take three times the molar mass of carbon in the periodic table and then add that to eight times the molar mass of hydrogen again from the periodic table. So now that I have moles of propane what I can do is I can convert to moles of carbon dioxide using those coefficients from my balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to put my coefficient for propane, which is 1 on the bottom, and then put my coefficient in front of carbon dioxide, which is 3 on the top. So that's going to give me moles of CO2. And now that I have moles of CO2, I can use molar mass again to convert this time from moles back into grams, only this time it's going to be for carbon dioxide. So I'm going to put that amount in moles on the bottom, one mole of carbon dioxide. That's what I'm trying to get rid of. And then I'm going to put my mass of carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams, on the top. Again, this comes from the periodic table. So how did I, so, so basically what, what have I done here? Well, on the outsides, I have simply used molar mass to convert from grams to moles and then eventually from moles back to grams. And then on the inside here is basically just the same thing that we did in the previous two examples, which is just this, this mole to mole conversion. So this is the 
pivotal step, if you will, where we actually go from uh, from one from the reactant to the product. So let's uh, make sure that all of our units cancel out here. We have grams of propane, grams of propane, moles of propane, moles of propane, moles of carbon dioxide, moles of carbon dioxide, and our final answer in this case is going to be 233 grams of carbon dioxide. So again, it's it's very simple, very logical, and uh, these are definitely the kind of problems that you might see on an exam. And uh, in the next video, uh, we're going to go a little deeper into stoichiometry. We're going to talk about a couple of concepts like limiting reagent, theoretical yield, percent yield, and things like that. So I look forward to talking with you about that, and uh, hope you got something out of this video. All right, you guys take it easy now.